Hey everyone, today we've got another fabulous case study for you. This patient has knee pain. Can you work out the diagnosis for what's going on? We're going to take you through the assessment and all the clinical reasoning to help you in your practice. If you're ready to learn, let's dive in. Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Join us for this case study. Let's start with the subject of history. So first of all, we have an 80 year old man who has a six month history of diffuse right knee pain. So the pain is diffuse, it's spread all over the knee it seems. They also have some intermittent occasional right sided groin pain. So the same side as their knee pain. Now they feel that their knee is the predominant factor here and they are not really sure why it started. It seemed to come on gradually, there certainly wasn't any particular trauma or injury that led to these symptoms and the patient says that there certainly isn't any back pain and there's no nerve-based radicular symptoms in their leg. So we're not really thinking about a sciatic presentation here. So the different factors that make the patient's symptoms worse, aggravating factors, getting in and out of the car, walking, squatting, and he seems to experience around about 30 minutes of stiffness in the morning in his joints. He reports that if he takes paracetamol, this can sometimes ease his symptoms, meaning that walking can be a little bit easier for him. This gentleman is retired, he lives with his wife in his bungalow, but quite clearly his knee pain is troubling him. So next, you look at your patient's objective assessment, starting with observation. First of all, you have a look at the patient's gait, and they quite clearly walk with an antalgic, painful gait. When they're walking, they have a shortened stance phase and a shortened stride length when they're stepping on that right leg, because clearly they want to try and get off that right leg as soon as possible to transfer weight onto the left. You have a look at the knees and there doesn't appear to be any swelling, bruising or any major deformity there. In fact, the knees appear to have a normal appearance for an 80 year old gentleman. So the next thing you do is you palpate the knee and you palpate the joint line in particular. And strangely, there doesn't seem to be any major tenderness when you're palpating the joint line of the knee. Nevertheless, you carry on with your active range of movement testing. So we start with the right knee and we see that this patient has 130 degrees of flexion, which causes mild pain around the knee, but they have full extension of the knee with no pain at all. So you decide to look a little bit further and you therefore have a look at the right hip, which seems to be stiff and painful when we look at both flexion and medial or internal rotation of the right hip. And it seems that his right hip is quite sore when you're doing these movements. So once again, you decide to go a little bit further and complete the FADIR test, which is a specific hip test. FADIR stands for flexion, adduction, internal rotation. So you position your patient's hip in that combined position and it seems to be positive and it re-irritates their hip pain or groin pain that the patient mentioned earlier. So those are some of the key signs from this patient's objective assessment. Have a look at the subjective history as well. Combine your thoughts and see if you can come up with your diagnosis for what you think this patient has. Okay, everyone, time's up. Let's go through the diagnosis. So having looked at this patient's assessment, we believe that there was more indication of a right hip problem than a right knee problem. So as a result, we referred this patient for an x-ray of the right hip and the results came back showing that he had relatively significant osteoarthritis of the right hip, which led to the suspicion that his right knee pain was actually referred pain from his right hip osteoarthritis. We know this does happen in practice, and it is suggested that when pain radiates from the hip to the knee, it gets referred down the obturator nerve, which runs from slightly medial to the hip right down to the medial aspect of the knee. And we do have lots of patients in practice who present with knee pain and hip pain, but when you delve into it further, the hip seems to be the main problem. More on that in a second. For now, let's have a look at the key points that led us to this particular diagnosis. First of all, 
There were a lot of features in this patient's case that suggested more of a prevalence of a hip pathology than the knee pathology. The hip was much more painful on movement testing. The fact that the knee had no major signs of irritation, pain on palpation, only a little bit of pain when completing active range of movement testing. We have a look at the other symptoms specifically for hip osteoarthritis. The patient's age supports that kind of demographic for diagnosis, the fact that he had no major injury or trauma, that symptoms have come on with a gradual onset also supports osteoarthritis, and the fact that he has early morning stiffness that lasts no longer than 30 minutes also is more in keeping with osteoarthritis than a condition like rheumatoid arthritis, which tends to have early morning stiffness longer than 45 minutes and beyond. So then we had a look at the hip specifically, and it was clear that this patient had pain and stiffness on range of movement testing at the hip, particularly with flexion and medial rotation in keeping with a capsular pattern or a joint-based pathology at the hip. Whenever you have a patient who has stiffness at the hip joint, the key thought process should be on a joint-based pathology. When we have extracapsular pathologies outside of the joint, such as greater trochanteric pain syndrome or an adductor tendinopathy outside of the joint, we do not expect stiffness because the joint surfaces are not involved in the patient's pathology. For this gentleman, with the fact that he had clear stiffness, it tells us that the joint surfaces are likely to be the area that is problematic. Finally, we know that the aggravating factors he had in terms of getting in and out of a car, reaching down towards his feet, walking and squatting are all in keeping with a hip pathology as well as the fact that he had a positive for deer test. So plenty of signs here for hip osteoarthritis as a part of this gentleman's condition. So the key take home message from this case study Always check the hip, or as this title of the research from Dibra et al. 2017 says, don't forget the hip. Hip arthritis masquerading as knee pain. And as you can see from Dibra et al., up to 29% of patients with knee pain also have hip osteoarthritis or other forms of hip joint pathology. And so it just goes to show that there are lots of patients out there with knee pain when it actually seems that the hip is the key pathology involved in the diagnosis. So for all your knee pain patients, always make sure you're completing a screening of the hip to check whether or not the patient has pain there in the subjective assessment. Have a look at active range of movement and passive range of movement of the hip in the objective assessment and really put it at the front of your mind that there's the possibility that this patient's knee pain could be due to the hip. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this case study. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. It's the number one thing you can do to help the Clinical Physio channel. And if you want more from us, remember to check out our Instagram account at Clinical Physio with loads of resources for physiotherapists. Now, if you enjoy learning through case studies, make sure you check out our membership platform, member.clinicalphysio.com. The link for membership is in the description below where we have the case study club. On the case study club, we have loads of brilliant experts in musculoskeletal, neurology, and respiratory physiotherapy coming on to share their clinical cases and explain all the clinical reasoning about the assessment and diagnosis and management for their patients. Well worth checking out if case studies is for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. My name's Khalid. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.